So I had a question, and the question was, when you are combining resistors in series versus parallel, and then you do the same thing with capacitors, the equations are kind of like flipped. And so why is that? And, I'm, and I gave an answer, and I didn't really like my answer, so I'm going to write a new, this is my new answer. So let's start with resistors. Uh, and let's do resistors in parallel, and then resistors in series. And then I'll do, um, actually, I'd, let's do the resistors in series. So let's start with Ohm's law. Ohm's law says that delta V equals I R. So the voltage across some resistor is equal to the product of its the current going through that resistor and, and the value of the resistor. Uh, I guess I should define uh, series first. Uh, an object is in series if you take one end and another end and then connect it to another one. So, so the, there's a really important thing that happens here, and that's that the current is the same through these two resistors. So I equals I1 equals I2. They all have the same current. Okay, so let's find the voltage the voltage drop across R1. So if I solve this for uh, the, if I want to take the voltage across the whole thing, delta V, it's going to be delta V1, the voltage across that, plus the voltage across the second one, delta V2. But delta V1 is going to be equal to I R1, plus the voltage across R2 is I R2. And so I can factor out the I and I get I R1 plus R2. And then I can say that's my total voltage. Well, that looks just like this if this is a single resistor of value R equivalent equals R1 plus R2. So in, in series, you add up the resistors. And this is for two. But if I had three or four or 55,128, 128, then it would still be the same. You just add them all up. Okay, I'm not going to do capacitors on this page. What about in parallel? So what makes things parallel is that they have uh, the two ends are connected. And that means that delta V1 equals delta V2. So in a things that are in series, they have the same current. Things that are in parallel have the same change in potential. So the change in potential across those two is the same. So I can write uh, and, and in fact, this whole thing has the same potential. Delta v, let's treat that as one resistor. Delta V equals delta V1 equals delta V2. And using Ohm's law, I can say delta V equals I. Oh, I'm sorry. I needed one more thing. So then if I have a current coming in here, I, it's going to split, right? The junction rule says that some current goes through here, I1, and some current goes through here, I2. But I equals I1 plus I2. The total current has to add up to uh, the this current in each branch has to add up to the total current. OK, so if I look at the voltage across this resistor right here, I can say delta V equals I1 R1, right? Because that's the delta V across that resistor is the voltage across the whole thing because everything's in parallel. And that's also equal to I2 R2. So I can write I1 as delta V over R1, I2 as delta V over R2. So if I put these two in up here, I get I equals delta V over R1 plus delta V over R2 equals delta V over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now, if I think of this as a single resistor up here, I equals delta V over R. So the equivalent resistance would be 1 over the equivalent resistance. 1 over R equivalent would be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And that's for parallel. OK, let's do capacitors. So here I have uh, capacitors. Let's do start with them. Um, let's start with in series. So here I have two capacitors in series. And so a capacitor at the at the most basic level is two 
parallel plates. And so what happens if I have a positive current going this way, then the positive charge builds up right here, and then that pushes negative charge, uh, pushes the positive charge off the other plate, so you get negative charge. So when I say this is plus Q and minus Q, and then we define the capacitance as the ratio of um, the total charge on one side divided by the change of potential across that capacitor. That's how we define capacitance. But if I do this for capacitors in series, then the, this side is going to get positive charges. But where do they come from? They came from that plate. So I couldn't have more charge right here than that because this piece right here is isolated, right? It's not actually connected to anything. So it has to have a zero charge. So that that negative Q has to be equal to this plus Q and that negative Q. So the charge on these two capacitors has to be the same, even if they're different capacitors. So I can say Q1 equals Q2. They have to be the same, right? Okay, so now let's look at the potential. Delta V equals delta V1 plus delta V2. If I treat this as one whole capacitor, then the change in potential across this plus the change in potential across that would be my total change in potential. And then I can use my definition of capacitance. I can say delta V is equal to Q over C. So this is going to be equal to uh, Q1, which is just Q, over C1 plus Q over C2 equals Q. They're all the same. And th that's going to be the same charge as the total capacitor. Now I can say this as Q over 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. Now if I think about this, if I want to write this in this form, then this would be uh, equal to delta V, right? And that's going to be equal to Q over C equivalent. So then C 1 over C equivalent would have to be 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. And that's for capacitors in series. And you see, it looks just like the equation for resistors in parallel. But it has to do with, why is this like this and the other one's the other way? It's because resistors in parallel have the same current, I mean, have different currents, but the same voltage. These do not have the same voltage, they have the same charge, which is, you know, like the current is the derivative of the charge. So that's really why, that's why they're flipped. Okay, let's do uh, capacitors in parallel. So here's Q1, here's Q2. Now, if I want to treat this as one whole capacitor, then I can say Q equals Q1 plus Q2, right? Because think of this as though they're just a whole plate. Whatever charge is on this side is the Q1 plus Q2, and then the charge on that side is Q1 plus Q2, negative. Okay, so that has to be true. So now I, again, want to write my capacitor equation, uh, which would be... Oh, so then I can write... Uh, Q1 equals C1 delta V. Q2 equals C2 delta V. They have the same potential because they're in parallel. So now if I want to add Q1 and Q2, I get Q equals Q1 plus Q2 equals C1 delta V plus C2 delta V equals delta V times C1 plus C2 equals Q. And then if I go and look at one equivalent capacitor, I could again say Q equals C equivalent delta V, such that C equivalent would be C1 plus C2, because that have to equal that. And so that's for capacitors in parallel, and that's the difference. So again, these equations look the same for resistors, but they're switched. And it has to do with, uh, really it has to do with what's the same and what's different in parallel and series circuits. In a series circuit, the current's the same, so you'd have to have the same charge. In parallel, the voltage is the same, so you'd have to have the same voltage. And there you go.
hope that helps. <laughs>